Gentlemen, welcome to Real Bravo Fine Art Gallery. I'm Kerry Jagger Gustin, I'm your current Arts Council President, and we're honored today to have two distinguished artists, both hail from New York City. Lindsay, she studied uh, design at Carson School of Design, and Nick, he studied music with the Metropolitan Opera Apprentice Program. They lived in New Orleans for about a year, and now they're in Tier C. A big Tier C welcome for Nick and Lindsay Williams, please. together to create a very bizarre theatrical experience. Right. And how do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, variety performance, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's a lost art in itself in a lot of ways, and, and the way it was done, you know, obviously taste changed, things changed through the years, but yeah, I was always inspired as a kid by uh, vaudeville. Um, mm -hmm. I used to love watching old footage of stuff that people would do that, would, that I found pretty incredible. And, <clears throat> One of the gentlemen who would tell me stories, of course, is, is Ralph Edwards, you know, who's a big part of this town, and it's, it's great to be here and knowing the history of that. But he would tell me stories about here and how wonderful of a place it was, but I always admired that he was able to uh, have these really ridiculous shows, you know, make a lot of people laugh and uh, bring it here, but he, you know, he always kept it at the Metropolitan, and later on I did study a little bit at the Met, and... Uh, did some uh, choral work with them, which was fun. But uh, but it really wasn't for me. You know, I, I I respect the opera world. I love it for what it is. I Obviously, I loved a lot about it, but I didn't like so much of the world. So I was always influenced by a whole bunch of different types of music and performance. And that goes the same for me. I was classically trained. I wasn't, you know, I was either going to go to school for music or go to school for art. I chose art. I hated practicing. Um, because it, it was an extremely competitive and very, very perfectionist environment, and I just couldn't handle the stress or the anxiety of it. So mm -hmm. I was like, I just would rather be in a studio painting. I don't have to deal with any of these uh, auditions and rehearsals and all this stuff. And I fell out of classical music for a while, and I picked it back up when we met. Right. Definitely in 2012 was a great time in New Orleans as well. It's for, a budding art scene for sure. Yeah. People, of a lot of fringe theater and uh, right. underground arts and warehouses and all kinds of things. And we kind of fell into that scene of people. And that's right. where we started to get really creative. Right. <laughs> there's definitely a time and a place, you know. And there's a lot of people that we worked with that went on to do really great things. And we'll get to. Uh, how it came to be in a minute, but mm -hmm. once we got to New Orleans, we needed to start making some money, because whatever we saved was going quick, so, <laughs> <laughs> so what did we do? We were like, okay, let's um, start playing some of our classical music in the streets of New Orleans, and so we people were busking. loving it, yeah, we, mm -hmm. we, we started busking there, right through Jackson Square, we would get lots of tourists, meet a lot of interesting people. Mm -hmm. 
So you know the art, the culture, the food, the everything. So if you can imagine yourself for a second walking down this, you know, Royal Street and you come across us standing there, we're playing classical we're just, music yes. just as we are. <laughs> you, know, you have a jazz musician on the street. You have a psychic on that corner. Where and us. <laughs> Circus troupe in New Orleans, and uh, that's that was 2014, early 2014, yeah. and that's 2014. where we were just experimenting with a whole bunch of things. You know, we met people that were in the circus for many years, and new new people, and we collaborated. And you know, someone would be rolling through New Orleans, and they would be able to teach us a few things. You know, people that have been in the business for a long time. Right. So you know, and there's no doubt that this is. You know, it's performance art, you know, you can, <laughs> and, you know, people, it's more than just an act, that's how we feel about it this year. <laughs> but usually you have the, uh, you know, the, the woman, you know, the man is usually throwing the knives around the woman. Mm -hmm. Yes. But we like to reverse we were like, that like, let's reverse that and turn Why that not? on its head. Let's combine <laughs> classical music with that and make that, like, a step above the weird and just keep building upon the weird and the weird and the weird. So when you... Combine two completely opposite things, you bring them together, it creates something extremely unique. Right. And, right. and that's how I feel like you create something that hasn't actually really happened before. Right. You know. And so. that's why we were able to, we were asked uh, yeah. to be a part in 2019 of Ripley's Believe It or Not, which was, again, very exciting, you know, growing Surprise. up reading these books. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so we got an awesome. Um, Red and Ripley's Believe It or Not. And uh, yeah, if you want to pass that around, if you want a little more. And this one as well, this sideshow book, which is cool. This, is, this has got all the uh, legends of. Yes, we made it into a Legends of Sideshow book. Yeah, so now we are cool. emblazoned in history. Right. <laughs> in Ripley's. Right. For all the sideshow people throughout right. time. Yeah. For sure. So, you know. So that happened all in 2019. The TV thing happened too, and well, you know, and unfortunately, when you're when you're bringing performance art to television, you're gonna deal with a lot of you know, yeah, that a lot was, of that to say how, that. how did we start that journey? So we decided <laughs> when you know we've been doing all these shows. We got to tour nationally with our little circus troupe around the West Coast and did a little show. We came back and we're like, well, how do we, you know. We were talking, we're like, we want to take this to the next level. Let's just see what happens if we send a video of what we've been working on to America's Got Talent, just for yeah. the heck of it. 
And we never really, you know, we were, we were not big TV watchers no. in general. We kind we of listened to a lot of music, not much TV. We no, we watched documentaries and movies, but not so much, you know, TV like that. You know, it's yeah. not something that we... No. So yeah. This is completely out of curiosity, and curiosity does kill the cat. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we were curious, and we're like, let's see what happens if we send this video to AGT. We got a phone call within five hours. And we were just like, what? Like, no way. Right. And then they're like, yes, we want to fly you guys out. Um, was it Hollywood? We went to LA. Well, yeah. LA, some part of LA before the Hollywood yeah. stage. But we were flown out there like, we're going to fly you out there. You want to audition for AGT? We're like, wow, sure, you're going to pay for a flight. You're going to fly. Let's just see what happens. We were ready to just bomb it, you know? <laughs> we were ready to like, exactly, we're going and happen. like, let's just be messes because I know right. this is, we, we knew we were like, we're not. This is just not even our world. We don't even know what's going to happen. We didn't think we'd make it past the first round. No, so it was like... When they, sh they filmed us the first... Uh, that like was the first act of the new season. That was the first act of the new... They put that us on the first. Yeah, that was wild. So it was, was one of the scariest moments of our artistic performance career, I would say. And then you get onto this big, giant stage, and you just see the, the sea of people. You're like, oh my gosh. And they're filming too, which is the whole other level on top of that. So we do our audition, and I'm praying. I'm like, I hope these knives get in because they never are perfect, never. And that's part of it that makes it funny. They fall out sometimes. Sometimes I miss, and they were perfect. <laughs> and I was just like, how did this happen? It was extremely lucky. I don't know who was watching, but somebody wanted this to happen. It was a perfect shot. And you're one, you know, the you one, know. Only one of those knives at your feet. Right, right, I'm the only like person that, that does that. So it was a strange <laughs> ability that happened when we were experimenting with weirdos in New Orleans. Right. And um, that happened, and then they're like, okay, well, you want to throw a knife at Simon, we'll get, if you want to throw a knife at Simon, we'll have you get through to Hollywood or the judge cuts the next round. And I'm thinking to myself, this could go really, really bad or really, really good. And I'm like, I'm terrified. Go with what scares you. Yes. Yeah. Please show the knife at me that you It got in. We made it to round two. Yeah. <laughs> Round three, which <laughs> and this is how so curiosity long. kills the cat. Right, <laughs> because... so that's the big live show, and then of course so many things went wrong.
that point, Simon Cowell, yeah, he, uh, he called us the worst act in, in, in history uh, on the show. Yeah, the worst act in the history of America's Got Talent. So we have a title. <laughs> <laughs> we were not, in, we do we have were not, we were not intending on getting a title. We were not intending on anything. We, were, we right. just were like, hey, if we get seen, maybe we'll get more work. Because this is what we do, this is what we love to do, this is part of us, of what we do as artists. But unfortunately, after that whole experience, it was, it was since it was so new, you know, we, again, we're coming from, you know, uh, fringe stages of New Orleans to Hollywood. That was all, in itself, an incredible, undescribable, you know, Yeah, they shit. stuck us on the and red then, carpet, they put yeah, hair and makeup like, on us, and we're just like... It's like, we're just doing everything ourselves, we bring in our own props, we carry, so, you know, every tour that we've done, we... we Everything, everything was DIY. Out then you have a team doing it for you, like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and then you could, and then you think to yourself, "Yeah, I could get used to this." <laughs> <laughs> and then you think to yourself, "Ooh, this is why artists get lazy after a while." <laughs> it's that the cool thing about that particular round is that we bounce back and forth with ideas because we wanted to make something different that also reflected the things that we like. We like rockabilly. We like punk rock. We like, um, you know, the Wild West and all these things. So they kind of, and, and of course, like goth stuff and Wild West, you know, coffins and all this stuff. So they just combined everything that we like together to make this really bizarre third round act. Right. And we had such an amazing set and we watched them build that mm -hmm. backstage and the, the crew on AGT was absolutely yeah, the coolest people great. ever. Really so awesome. in the end, even though it didn't go well, it was really the process of that was really interesting to experience and be a part of creatively. Um, the hard part getting off a show like that is, yeah, it does change your life forever. We are not, we, our lives would never, have, our lives have never been the same since we've done that. Um, how we appear to the public, how we appear to our friends, our family, you know, we put ourselves out there and and that just goes to show you, like, it's a risk to put yourself out there 100%. And is it worth the risk? Yeah, if you want to live an authentic life and be 100% yourself, sure, it's definitely worth the risk. But there are definitely parts to that that were very difficult. Um, and it was difficult to deal with public scrutiny and, uh, you know, all, this, all the stuff that comes with that. You have to shut it off. You have to turn it off. It's like <laughs> yeah. a switch. Um, we'll see what happens this year with COVID, you know. <laughs> yeah, we hope There's to so many... more countries. That's the idea. That would be the idea. Because, yeah. you know, after all the confusion and strangeness that happened with the AGT experience, you're now in the network. Right. And what they do is they reach out to you. They take, they go around the different performers and network and they pass them around the different countries. So right. in the end, it was a cool experience was, because yeah. we get to travel internationally. Right. And that is worth it to us. Yes. Right. Of what we do as being curious people and we not mean, giving up too. We're not giving up. We're staying no. curious. We're staying we, We're sticking with it because it's something we truly believe in as an art form that we're doing and we right. love to do it right. and I, I Guess you could say we you know, we're taking these experiences is only gonna build upon the layers of what we do right in our art and who we are as people. I mean, now, and, I mean, we, Lindsay's yeah. been doing so many great new paintings. Mm -hmm. We have been doing just music. We have been kind of stepped mm -hmm. away from the sideshow for a while. Because mm -hmm. there's only so much you can do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, so you have to, you know, which has been nice just to get back to the musical roots and, and, and really focus on that, so. There's, you know, pros and cons to it all, but, you know, you just gotta keep on, like I said, evolving, changing, you know? and, and find ways to make it different, even if you're just doing music, trying different things with it. It doesn't have to always be the, mm -hmm. the crazy stuff. But we'll I do see. a little bit of the crazy stuff right now. Yes! <laughs> Why not? We have a I'm gonna do a little sideshow for you all. Well, I 
show stuff as much anymore because it has to come from this really it comes from an intense place for sure I'm not sure what that is but we, we learn these things in life <laughs> for sure yeah. I did yes uh, during the pandemic uh, there was a lot of time so I always wanted to create um, a tarot deck and I was worried that COVID might kill me <laughs> and I would never do it. So I said, I'm gonna sit down and make this happen. So that's something I created in 2020 and I'm still, still making it to this day. <laughs> so I, I self-published that and I also self-published a guidebook to go with it as well. Um, I've been selling them out constantly so I don't have any in stock at the moment, but it's been doing really well. Oh, yeah, great. Yes. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Thank you very much. <laughs> My initial interest was illustration. Okay. Yes. That's how you wound up there. Yes, that's how I wound up there because they had a really good program for uh, our business, and um, I know that it's hard sometimes to be an artist and a business person at the same time because it doesn't even sound like the two things go together to be honest. But you need you need both things to, to really do well as I feel as an artist. You need to have to be a good a, a, you need to be a good artist. You have to also be a, a good business person. So I chose that school because they had a good program for business and I learned a lot of how, you know, to market my stuff and, and be a good business person as an artist through that program. Yeah, so it was a rigid structure, yes. Um, and this is my rebellion against rigid structure. <laughs> I have to have both, otherwise they'll go completely. 